It all started with a Korg MS20. That's why basically. I brought one here. Yeah, that's a very nice one. It, it, it has two golden teeth. Yeah, like, like an elderly yeah. gentleman having yes. these golden teeth. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. That, so, so it fits to us. That's why it was allowed to go on stage. So um, to clear up the uh, rätsel here, um, I don't know if you are in the age of knowing about the name of his band, but I would be very happy to let you um, be reminded to listen to their new record. Uh, this is Moritz Air from the band Der Plan. Thank you very much for coming. By the way, he's also, I think you're also a painter, no? Or yes, I, I'm basically a painter who got into music yeah. by the Korg MS-20 because it was so exciting. Yeah, okay, I understand. So this is the, the picture to listen at. Okay, we can talk about the MS-20 later again. On my left hand, I uh, welcome another guest who's um, also a very experienced uh, user of... Uh, experimental ways to produce sound and use things on the floor and uh, we, we've just been talking about all possibilities of making sounds with this and that and uh, I'm so happy that also in the show with all the new exhibitors you can see many new aspects of DIY stuff and having machines who are bumping on drums again by triggers and CV. I think that's something that you could have been making years ago. But I have the impression that he's more in between, more fascinated by the new technologies. Um, that was confirmed when I asked him for his favorite synthesizer. And um, this is Jan Werner from Mouse on Mars. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And talking about synthesizers, I... Um, Asked everybody, what's your favorite synthesizer? And um, I think it's okay if I start with me. My favorite synthesizer is the Jupiter 4 from a company called Roland. They still build something, but to be honest, I would still prefer the old stuff, and I still have a Jupiter 4 at home that works, where I have a trigger input, and the trigger input is coming from my uh, sequencer in the Eurorack, and then I have something going in the Eurorack, and this is connected with my old drum machine, and this is connected with the Jupiter 4, and this is making arpeggiator sounds, and this is always the best, where people come in, what is this and that sound coming from? Uh, it's that Jupiter, ah. Oh. Uh. It's still that Jupiter, ah. Oh. <laughs> always the Jupiter, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other stuff from can't compete. It can't compete. No. And then I asked Daniel, what's your favorite synthesizer? Um, the ARP 2600. The ARP 2600. I mean, I have a lot of favorites. But the, the ARP, if I need a sound, I've got it in my head, and I know I, know I can get it, for, I get it from the ARP. Most of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just expect, you know, when I'm working <laughs> yes. with a modular. Yeah, yeah, sure. But when I know what I want, that's the, I know how to get it on the ARP. So that's... And Did you make your records with the ARP? My own record, yeah. no, that, was, that came later. I used a Korg 700S, which is also my favorite synth. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the yeah. Korg 700S, I'm yeah. sorry I don't have, but yeah. um, after you told me about it, I said, would you, would you mind yeah. if I get one on stage here, an up mm. 2600? Yeah. And if anybody it. remembers um, the record Back to Nature by Fad Gadget, um, that was the first time I used the ARP 2600 on that record to get all the jungle sounds at the beginning, the sound of the rainforest. Ah, okay. yeah, oh, you, you, you played on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, <laughs> bit of, that's for the teenagers. It's one for the teenagers. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one for teenagers. <laughs> yeah. But you, you also have something with each other to do in earlier times, no? Yeah. Uh, yes, we, we met in um, 1980 or something, and we... Um, Daniel published, I think, the English version of Fred from Jupiter, and then, of course, yeah. uh, DAF. <laughs> that was the English version. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. And you did some artwork for us as well. That's right, for Depeche Mode. For Depeche, for Depeche Mode, Mode yeah. you did some sleeves, because we were all big fans of, the, uh, of your artwork. Yep. Um, the <laughs> Depeche Mode design changed a lot then, later. It changed but a in lot. But yeah. in the first days, it yeah. kind of, it, kind yeah. of fitted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fred from Jupiter had an English version. Well, no. 
Yes? No. No, it was the same version. I, uh, no, there, there is an, actually an English version, but I think it was so terrible that it wasn't published in the oh, end. Oh, okay. Because ah. <laughs> the, one, the one we released was in German. Yes. And I remember we, we had it for... The, all, we licensed it from At Attack Records for Europe, and we had to do a TV show in France for the record. And because all the girls were under, eight, under 18, they were all, I don't know, 13, 14, all the parents had to come as well. So it was about 40 people uh, kind of on the road show going to do this French TV, I remember that. <laughs> I guess that was one of the reasons why Andreas um, pretty soon dropped the whole Marina <laughs> idea. It was an expensive touring became project. Became a solo yeah. artist. <laughs> Yeah. You need the microphone. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like he was very ahead of his time. Yeah. It feels like every modern band is <laughs> kind of a pop band. Yeah. It works like this, no? All 13, 14? Yeah, parents have to go everywhere. Yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very boring for the kids. <laughs> you know. But uh, I heard that they always had to play in the early afternoon. Yeah, of course. Bec yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Uh, the top act, and then nobody wanted to play after them, yeah. because everybody was going home then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not a good business model. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yeah, I, yeah. It's uh, nearly quarter past eight. This is normally the time where the entertainment starts, and this was the news in Germany. <laughs> uh, perhaps we start some entertainment? No. <laughs> so my idea was that I ask uh, my buddies here on the Altherrenabend, what's your favorite synthesizer, and could you explain it to us? So, and then... Um, that's why I brought the MS-20, but uh, the MS-20 this time was brought from Christian Günther to us, so you still see that he was... Um, you saw that on their booth there? And you could play on that, and that's why I said, just place it there, and that's good. And that's an old gentleman with the gold teeth here, and then we won't <laughs> celebrate that. And uh, Moritz said, that's fine. <laughs> he, he played it so often and so long. <laughs> And in those days, he never used those patch cables. But uh, then I've been forcing Daniel to please explain us the sound of an ARP 2600 in a short show. And uh, luckily, I could win um, a part from uh, Christian Günther, who uh, landed us his MS-20. I could win uh, Panic Girl, who's playing uh, later on uh, on this stage today, uh, together with Jericho. Not on the ARP 2600, but on this stage, and she landed us the ARP 2600 that's completely f working. And yeah. then I said, hey, Daniel, would you mind if you give us a little introduction into that product? And uh, I think this could be entertaining, if you agree. I would uh, very yeah. warm welcome if now. you give us a little, okay. why not? Okay, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Do you need something? No, okay. I'm fine. Then I will have another <laughs> beer, and that's fine. Um, I've also brought, I mean, okay, I'll just start with a little bit of... Um... Would you mind if I ask one of the camera guys to follow that, that the people can see what you do? Okay. Um... Do we have one? Okay, cool. Okay. I, so, um, I just, my personal history with the... We can uh, also uh, look. 26, what? We can also look, no? We want to look? Uh, yeah, I'm just oh, talking. So we can look there. I'm yeah, just okay. talking. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything at the moment. I'm just talking. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you can watch yeah. me talk. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Where's so, the camera? Yeah. Ah, the camera is there. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, we have to look there. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, where was I? Uh, nowhere. Um, <laughs> my my uh, my personal history with the um, ARP 2600 is a very long one. I, uh, um, as I said just earlier, I, I didn't. It wasn't my original synthesizer, um, but. It was something that I always really wanted. And I, uh, in the old days, um, there was an English music paper called The Melody Maker. Um, they used to have a lot of adverts in the back selling equipment and stuff like that. And I was just browsing through one day, and I saw a list of equipment being sold, Mellotron, Hammond organ, Moog, blah, 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 up 2600. So I thought, well, that sounds interesting. And 
I went to the place where they were selling it, and it was a big warehouse full of two of everything. So there was two ARP 2600s, two Hammonds, two Mellotrons, two Mini Moogs, two sets of amps. And what it turned out was it was um, Elton John had just finished his world tour, and they were selling off all the equipment. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so, and it was, they were selling it, they wanted to get rid of it fast because it, it was taking up a lot of space and there was so much of it. So it was a really, a, a, you know, a good price. So I decided to buy it and I got it and I, it came in a huge flight case with Elton John along the side of it. <laughs> and, uh, which I was very proud of, I must say, because I guess he used it on Rocket Man or something like that. Anyway, that's that. And then I, you know, then I started to learn about it and get into it. And I said the first thing I used it on was the, the Fad Gadget single. And um, yeah, so it's, it, it, it was released, I think, in mid early 70s. I don't know the exact date. As a kind of competitor to the Mini Moog. Um, it was made by a gentleman called A.R. Perlman. Um, uh, and it's really very, there's only a few things that are similar to, to a mini-move. It's got three oscillators, a filter, two envelope generators, a fil um, but that's about it. Um, a mixer. But there the similarity stops. I mean, there's, um, for a start, the, I mean, the biggest difference with the ARP 2600 is the fact that it's what they call semi-modular. Uh, I actually don't like that term because it's, uh, I think I should, it should be more like modular plus because actually it's a fully modular synthesizer, but also has, is pre-wired inside, pre-patched. And the pre-patching is really flexible on this. Look, each oscillator has got three or four modulation inputs. The filter's got three modulation inputs. Um, so it's really flexible. And I'm not going to, apart from the sequencer, the ARP sequencer, which for me, because I'm not a keyboard player, so I never really use the keyboard. It comes with a keyboard normally, but I don't use that. So the, so the main way of creating stuff on here was through the ARP sequencer, which I brought with me. And I'm just, so the only patch chords I'm using are the ones that, um, uh, that, that, that connect the sequencer. I'm not, all the other sounds are made by internal patching. The other thing that, I've, that for me is very important on any synthesizer is this initial gain, which means that, um, it means that the VCA stays open all the time. You don't, have to, you don't have to open it with an envelope generator, which, you, for instance, you have to on the Mini Moog and most pr uh, pre-wired synthesizers. Obviously, on modular stuff, you, you, can, you don't have to. So for more kind of weird drony stuff, which is not coming out, ah, that's why. So it's, that's just a, nothing much going on. Just a couple of oscillators, filter. I'm modulating the filter with a, a third oscillator. The other thing that's, imp uh, that's uh, important, important, interesting, kind of, uh, not even that interesting <laughs> about this, is that um, the, this, I think this version, it has, it, was, it has a filter which was a rip-off of the Moog filter. And actually, Robert Moog sued A.R. Perlman, um, because he, and he won the case that, that, that his filter had been ripped off. So the later, module, uh, later models have a different filter. But even though this has got something that's supposed to be a ripoff of the Moog field, it doesn't really sound like a Moog to me anyway, to my ears. It sounds much, it's got a kind of leaner, punchier sound than a Moog. I mean, nothing wrong with the Moog, but I'm just saying. And um, so the ARP sequencer for me is a very important part of um, working with the 2600. Uh, it's a real, I mean, it was, there were very few analog sequences in those days. There was the one that came with the Moog modular system, and there was this, and that was about it. And of course, now there's tons of analog sequences. Every module uh, makes some kind of a sequencer, and that's amazing. But this has got some really great features on it, um, which are kind of unusual. I mean, very quickly, it's got three gate 
outputs. So you can assign each channel, each uh, step has got three gate positions. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. And um, you can assign that to different gates. So, for instance, if you had another two synthesizers, you could, you could have one synthesizer, gate one could be triggering one synthesizer, gate two, another synthesizer, gate three, another one. So it's very good for creating percussion patterns and drum sounds and stuff like that. It's got 16 uh, steps, which can be divided into two of eight or, or less if you have a reset. Um, it's got a clock frequency. It's got two CV outputs, which is also really great. It's got a two volts quantized CV output for pitch, and it's got a 10 volt output for filters or VCAs or something else. So that's really cool. So I'm just going to muck around with it for a bit and shut up. Baseline, you can turn some steps off. And the, the left hand, uh, well, one to eight is controlling the pitch. And, um, and uh, nine to 16 is controlling the filter frequency. Except for it's not. <laughs> And it's modu and I'm, I'm, I'm modulating the uh, I'm modulating the uh, filter with a audio oscillator like kind of FM audio, and uh, that's great for kind of percussion sounds. gleich verteidigen. Ja. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, that was probably the very last um, synthesizer, analog synthesizer demo of the Superbooth 2017. <laughs> because they're all gone outside. Yeah. <laughs> super, yeah. thank you, Daniel. No, that was super. <laughs> and thank you, fun. Marta, for lending us the UP2600. Yeah, thank you.
Yes, we had in between, we had a little, uh, because, you know, we were sitting here like that, and then it was after a while, <laughs> and then um, Jan said, yeah, but we can see it on the internet, and he took off his cell phone <laughs> and said, good idea, yeah. and then, but it doesn't work, because okay. we have no, no internet yeah. in the yeah. building. That was, good. that was a good clue, no? no? Really fucking bad internet in the whole building. Wasn't that great? Nobody was running around with their cell phones. <laughs> it was not made because I don't want you to call your wife or something, but, um, you know, if you, if you run the streets and if you go through other trade shows, people are standing there like... It's very bullshit. And you, it's very I want you to watch the synthesizers and to talk to each other and meet up. And that's why I thought it's good. And then all these uh, manufacturers was complaining about, ah, do we have high-speed internet and all the media people who would like to upload this and that. Yeah. But I mean, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't talk anyway. It's, huh? it's so loud, you can't talk in, in here. No, yeah, no, 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 that was good. You, you haven't been to Frankfurt. That was silence. That was, that was silence. <laughs> but that was really relaxed. Even last year was worse in the Funkhaus because they have Marmor Fußboden. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then we looked to his um, cell phone, and the internet didn't go, but then I said, yeah, you want to see I this Don't stick your feet in the, in the bucket. Uh, we want to yeah, drink this. I, I, I want to hide them, you know? <laughs> I would like to hide them. That's the idea. I mean, you can put it in the beer side, okay? Okay, I, I want the water. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. That's, oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> um, no, then, but then you took off your... Your favorite synthesizer. Uh, I asked him earlier, what's your favorite synthesizer? What's your favorite synthesizer? I don't have a favorite synthesizer. Okay, that's all. <laughs> all right. I, yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. Ah. Ho hold on. Hold on. Oh, I just got, I got this. I got this just today, you know? Let's share this. And I don't even know what it's called. It's ah, a it's okay. Casper Electronics thing. I haven't Here. seen that earlier. Super. It's a beautiful piece of art. And this is what I like about synthesizers. They, they kind of display a way of thinking and... It's kind of a crazy idea of how the brain works. You know, you, you plug and wire and amazing things happen. Sometimes it's very noisy and disgusting. Um, this is a you really cool portable device. Yeah. And it, it matches my idea of the size of what a synthesizer should Yeah, the size have. is great. Yeah. And the handle, you know. Yeah. yeah. Going shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. very good. Going on stage, you can make. <laughs> you can cut pizza slices, you yeah. know. Yeah. Is, okay. Uh, you know. Wait, so now I, uh, now now I know why uh, yeah, the, head, the headset was clever. I think uh, Daniel is a pro. He knows. Okay, so let me switch this on. Um, is Pete in this room? Is what? Pete? Pete? W what, is, what is the OF called? The soft pop? Okay. <laughs> it's good. That's a good name. What do you think, Daniel? Soft pop? Soft pop. Yeah. Soft pop from Casper Electronics slash Bustle, um, Stroke Bustle Instruments. Oh, it works. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's your new favorite synthesizer too, isn't it? I yeah, can, I can great. see it in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, it's really great. It was <laughs> fascinating me indeed. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, my first synthesizer was um, a Seal Opera 
CEO Pro Six. Zeal was that Zeal, yeah, Italian S company. SIE, -E, uh, Italian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And yeah. always was out of tune, and I, it was very cheap. It was the synthesizer I bought because I could afford it, and I, I loved it. And uh, yeah, a lot of the Mouse Mars records were made with this synthesizer. Zeal. Zeal, yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, they built organs? And the Seal, yeah, they built all kinds of synthesizers there. I th I, we once were in a, we had a show somewhere in the north of Italy, maybe to, you know, no, I think it was, it was via, it was Vicenza maybe or something. No, that's, yeah, I think so. And they have a museum of all the Seal synthesizers there. I had no idea how many they had built, and um, <laughs> some of them were actually very successful, and mm. others were not at all. Yeah. And, you know about them, Daniel? Not yeah. much, no. Yeah. I've seen them, but not don't really know. Yeah. They're very smoky, hazy sound, and we, but Andy and me, we, we really loved the sound. So, but the Italians um, were very advanced for a certain kind. I have a wet drum machine that has a, a, a five fiddle. How do you say that? Five fourth. Uh, uh, a full and one time. quarter. Huh? Five quarter. Five, yeah, five quarter. Uh, and uh, it's having wet beats yeah. where you have separate outputs. Five over four. Yeah, five over four. Yeah. And then you have separate outputs for drums, bass, and, uh, okay. and a little keyboard. And, um, and you can trigger it. And that's mm. Italian. And uh, it's, it's very outstanding mm. stuff. Actu actually, in the 70s, Italy was uh, a, a producer country for synthesizers yeah. and electronic instruments. Kuma. Mm. Wasn't that also Itali Italian? No. I don't know. I, one, one day I, I, I checked what the instruments were that we played our first songs and, and records on. Yeah. And they were all from Italy. I didn't know that at the time, but Italy was an electronic mm. music producer in the 70s. Yeah, there must have been a scenery of people who were inspiring each other. Yeah, what was the brand names? Um, Farfisa, yes, yes. yes. Somebody called Farfisa. <laughs> Ah, Kvafisa is great, yeah. yeah. And everybody knows Kvafisa. Yeah, Elkart. Elkart. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Nice audience. <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> it's something like uh, what we call nowadays, we call it a database, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if you don't have internet, yeah, yeah you need yeah. an audience. Yeah, you, know. <laughs> you need, don't need, yeah, that's much better. I like it more than... It's internet, like a yeah. Google Cloud or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a Google Cloud, cool. <laughs> uh, Google Shout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Moritz, what about you? So, what's your favorite? Tell, tell us your story about your favorite synthesizer. Well, my favorite synthesizer is actually the Mini Moog, but the Mini -Moog, I, okay. I couldn't afford it at the ah, time. I could have brought one. It's um, it's similar to the Cork, basically. Ah, yeah. It has, but it has three uh, oscillators, so it sounds fuller and warmer, and and it doesn't have this confusing. Um, plug pad that the cork has and that only a few people that I know actually used extensively. Um, but, um, but it looked good. It looked pretty well having this board. It, it's, yeah. it's the type of synthesizers that I can play. You can basically see how it works, you know, the oscillators and the filters and the envelope. And so you know what you're doing when, when, when I see these these boxes that outside there was millions of cables. I, I don't even know where to where to start using them. So yeah. that's basically a, when I'm in the studio, I'm looking for a sound. I have an Im imagination what the sound uh, could be, and I don't have all the time in the world to to find the sounds by trying out. So I think there are basically two ways to use a synthesizer. One is as a toy. You you play with it. You make it do things that you didn't expect and that come out of the machine and you can use them. And the other uh, way around is you, you, you want to make, make a song, you know what you want, kind of, and then you have to have a way to find it. You have, you have to uh, have a way to really go to the point where you are satisfied. So that's two very different ways to, to, to use a synthesizer, I think. Cool. How did you make your record now? Do you still use synthesizers? Uh, um, yes, <coughs> of course, but they're all software synthesizers. Oh. I mean... <laughs> 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 but it's funny, the funny thing is, almost all software synthesizers have a, a visual display and they want to look like an old synthesizer. Yeah. So it's like vinyl, vinyl magic. Uh, in, in, in the synthesizer world. 
but um, yeah, I'm t today I I, I want to make a song, and I uh, produce a sketch, and then I, I go to the real studio, and then we figure out how it how it should sound, and then we use whatever we find, whatever we can make op operational. Yeah, but real studios very often don't have real synthesizers anymore, no? They they are still there. They are still, but practically seldom yeah. used. Yeah. I mean, um, ten years ago, I I, I had a Der Plan project we called Der Plan 4.0, and it was with uh, I, I worked with two other people because uh, Frank Fensermacher and Kurt Darke were busy with Feel Farm at that. They didn't have the yeah. time. Yeah, Farm was and great. We, uh, we said we, we want to make uh, we want to sound like 1980. So we. Uh, cool. Borrowed a Korg MS20 and the sequencer and the vocoder, and then we we sat there three weeks in a in a studio and we just made made the album with just the Korg. Yeah. So, th in the old-fashioned way, and the difference is um, these real synthesizers, especially the old ones. They are they have this certain way to be unprecise, so you can always hear. The oscillator is not like 100% tuned all the time. It changes a bit, and that gives it the lively... Patina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the difference. I mean, when you go digital, everything is like 100% what yes, it is. Yes, uh, but why did you use... Uh, you don't like that, or why did you use digital ones then? <clears throat> because... Um, the last album we make is a songwriter album okay. and not a retro synthesizer album. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I'm very sure it's worth to listen to their plan, the latest album. Because which, which doesn't mean we can always go back to, to using other ways to, to make sounds. Like Mouse on Mars, for me, always was the band who, who use any sounds they can make, basically, whether with a synthesizer or with, with anything else, old synthesizer, new synthesizer, you have, you have these millions and billions of possibilities, and that's a, a bit of a, of a danger. So, um, <laughs> at one point, you have to make <laughs> up your mind what you want, you know. We had a little chat about this earlier, and you said you was in their studio and you saw everything. Yeah, they, they, they kept all the synthesizers. I mean, most people that I know, they, they use synthesizers and they buy new synthesizers and the old ones are eventually sold. And so, But they seem to keep everything they ever had for potential yeah, yeah. Re reuse. Yep. Yeah, well, sometimes you put them out of the house so they can watch the street for a little bit for a few hours and we take them back in <laughs> while we work. <laughs> yeah, we, we like, we like, I mean, we owe them something, but... You know, we we discovered that whatever we use, uh, after spending a bit of time with it, it sounds pretty much like how you how you always sound, right? Um, so uh, I wouldn't I would want to use a tool that sounds so different from anything I've ever used, but I didn't manage yet. So most of the things I get at some point they sound like <laughs> yeah, well, they sound like us somehow, right? But this is why we started making software because um, we. We don't want to deal with the machine or the object as such. It's really understanding, look, we're in the sound world anyway, so if it's an orchestra or a machine or a piece of software, um, when you spend time with it and yeah, tweak it or just see where the flaws and gaps are. Or the, and, and I do think digital can produce a lot of instability and, and mistakes and interesting... Yeah, it's a new, uh, a new one. I, I, I can tell you the old ones as well. I think old digital technology is Digi the best to Digital break. is uh, getting more analog <laughs> the, the, the more refined it is. Yeah, but <clears throat> yeah, I think um, I, 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 lost my, I lost my thought. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> a digital analog, I don't know. It's, it's just like, yeah. I mean... Andreas it just, has it doesn't matter, it's what subject. you hear. It's, Sorry? it's just not a tool. It doesn't matter. It's a tool, and I mean, the, the, the range that we can hear is so limited, and we make such a fuzz about like these tiny differences of like this filter sounding different than that filter, and yeah. vinyl sounding different yeah, than sure. the MP3 resolution versus 44 kilohertz, uh, 9,700. 
bites and yeah, but in the end, it's a question: what you do from it? Yeah, and what you really perform? Yeah, what can you actually really? Hear? Yeah. Do you really know how how good you hear? I mean, do you? Really I hear have very a, bad. I see? I have problems. <laughs> you know, I have I have uh, how, how do you call it? Hörgeräte. But I lo lose them always. That's why I'm talking so loud, and that's ah, why yeah, I'm yeah. talking all the time yeah. because then I don't have to follow what the others tell me <laughs> because I, you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's like that. Ich bin schwer beschädigt. Nee, schwerhörig heißt das, genau. Yeah. But it, it's nice to be part of your world a little bit, I, I can tell you. Thank it's, you. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, cr yeah. you still create amazing yeah. situations for others as well. You still see it's them. It's good to understand. Right? You, yeah, still yeah. See, hmm? you still see each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I see you. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, my, no. my, my synthesizer just wanted yeah, to give me a call. Yeah, your synthesizer called, called up, yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, to get back to yeah. why we're here, so we're, we're <laughs> yeah? yeah? Who is it? It's for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a, a special card just for his wife to be available, no? Huh? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean, you see, this is this is the thing. It's about what you hear and how you shape that. Yes. And I don't want to spend too much time figuring out how a synthesizer works or how someone else's brain got imported into this amazing machine. If I like the brain, <laughs> it might be interesting. I, I like... Uh, <laughs> was it what I said or how they opened the beer? <laughs> no idea. Yeah, it's good. S -s Synchronicity. Popping up a beer bottle is art too. <laughs> hmm? What did you say? Popping up a beer bottle is yeah. art too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opening a beer bottle is a is a um, the way you open the bottle. Yeah, sure. I, a, I would it's say a it's, a craft. it's a It's a kind of a performance. No. <laughs> it's true. Mm. Yeah, that's how you open it. But, it's but not that you're able where to we do are it. at beer, so. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Talking about drugs and politics. Yeah. No? I'm, I'm critical about both. <clears throat> okay. I, I use it both. You never took drugs. Uh, you never go to the votes? To vote? Yes, of course yeah. I go to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <whoa. laughs> yeah, what, what, what did you vote last time you've been going to vote? Last night? Uh, no, 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 last, uh, the last vote. What was your last vote? You're German, no? <laughs> <laughs> or are you American? Or No? <laughs> uh, uh, did you vote Trump or what? <laughs> <laughs> or are you Turkish? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, or what? Uh, could be, you know. I don't mind. You know what? <laughs> you like the best module system I experienced in this whole event. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, absolutely. No, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like your random connections are just amazing. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it turns out like being a, a, a comedy show here, no? They're laughing all the time. <laughs> but it's not me laughing, it's they laughing, you know? It's the Google... Uh, well, how did you call it? Google, Google Cloud? No, Google... Cloud. Go. Cloud. Cloud. Crowd. Google, Google Crowd. <laughs> yeah. I said cloud, you said shout. <laughs> the Google Crowd I like most. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they all have Google, no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I, yeah. I don't have Google. I, if one of you has an idea for a cell phone with a real dial, <laughs> it would be welcome. I would take it. <laughs> There's a few inventors here. Yeah, yeah but anyway. Um, Marco, T. Ramschmier said there's a synthesizer with uh, a kurbel. I don't know what's a handle. Yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like yeah. these telephone things, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, modular shall my. Yeah, the. the is it dynamo <laughs> or what is it? Hmm? <laughs> you wind up your synthesizer uh, yeah, before perhaps. you can yeah, play it? Yeah, but that's, uh, that would be uh, going further into the organic. Imagine Depeche Mode having each a synthesizer where like one guy they has to like, stare at the dynamo all the time. <laughs> All three hours? Yeah. yeah. I think I'll tell him. 
That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll jump at the chance. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I, I'd like to have into it. You, is there a question from the audience? Yeah, there was a question just. Huh? Who had a question? <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody out there? Yeah. Oh, now I see you. Uh, did, uh, does anybody, is there any questions from the audience? Okay, there's no question from the audience. We can go ahead. Okay, carry on, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but if they want to dance, they should come down the front. Yeah, okay, good idea. Yeah. 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 So I can, I can uh, use the time if we just have a little gap in between the topics. Uh, we can use the um, time to uh, edit some promotions for the further ongoing things tonight. Because uh, I would like to let you know that we still have a concert next door after this talk that is held by Ströme, who are playing on their um, modular synthesizers um, on invitation of Dieter Döpfer, uh, a performance in the K1 where we could all start to dance. This is the first thing. When they played this performance, where they um, oh, this is two guys that used to play for a company for a band called La Bras Banda, and uh, they was a bit bored from playing trumpets always uh, all the time, and then you know <laughs> you can't make pot and whatever. <laughs> then they ch swapped over to play modulars, and this is La Bras Banda and modulars. And then later on, we will have Panic Girl over here. Uh, performing together with Jericho, uh, performance on modulars that is more for seated audience. This is one after the other. And then, as the last topic in this building for Superbooth 17, there will be a performance by a band called Mouse on Mars presenting their instruments and a few friends. And uh, one of the two guys from Mouse on Mars is uh, sitting next to me. And what are you planning to do? Now, I, I have this mashup of. Um, hold on. We need a camera? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a, an accident. It, it's uh, Bruce Didmus. He's a he's a drummer, and he played this. He made this amazing record. I think it's called Yellow Dust. Uh, Internet this connection is, this is, is bad. Is the drummer still? Yeah. It's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's drumming so fast. It sounds like a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and uh, I played this uh, song to a friend, um, actually, um, yeah, Zach uh, Condon from Beirut. And I said, I, I think it's not such a bad song, this Depeche Mode song. And then, but you know, I also just learned about this guy, Bruce Didmus, and, <laughs> and played him Yellow Dust, this record. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I thought, it's actually not that different, right? I mean, Didmus is more irregular, but it's like this very distinct synth sound, and it's very... Um, uh, it, it wants something from you, right? It's, it's in your face. Yeah. And then Zach said, yeah, maybe they go well together. And then we just played them both at the same time <laughs> and, <laughs> and recorded it. And it actually matches really well, I think. Sounded so good. It, it adds, yeah. uh, they add well to each yeah. other uh, somehow. Um, I don't know why I came up with it, but uh, <laughs> I thought this is maybe the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, there's sometimes there's moments to do this yeah. or that, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, but um, yes, we play we play Mom Instruments, um, which is our software label. We started this label. But it's a software label, and yeah. uh, so this is not your favorite synth. What they do? Then. I don't have a favorite synth. This is really yeah, okay, all these on. different Go things. The I don't know. Synth, your yeah. first synth is the deepest. It's maybe the Seal. I don't know. I love the Crackle synth by Michel Weisfisch from Stein. It's a synthesizer with. Um, it's basically one of the first um, kind of circuit bending machines, devices, and he had the circuit open. So you modulate by using your hands. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it's a beautiful wooden box, and it something. has its speaker, yeah. which is in the lid of the box. So you open it, and you 
mic up the sound of the synthesizer because if you would plug it into a voltage, uh, like into a power, mm, what's it like? If you power it with like high voltage and you touch the circuit board, uh, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> So it runs with batteries, and you have the speaker, you open it. And recently, uh, in Boston, uh, I had the chance to use a, a Triadex Muse. Um, it's Marvin Minsky's idea of a synthesizer that um, plays for you, and you communicate with it, and the sequences are infinitely changing. It sounds like a, a game, like a, 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 yeah, a game console, like an yeah. 80s kind of game yeah. sound console, going kind of mad, in a way. Um, but it's beautiful because it, it never really repeats the sequence. The idea is the communication between the man and the machine is like you listen to the machine, sometimes you change something. It has no keyboard, just has like the sequencer and runs this 8-bit type sound. This is a beautiful synthesizer. I, li I like when they, like synthesizers can really, I think it's so great, they can just display a, a certain way of, like an idea and, and the complexity of the idea as well. And Ah, there, it's back. <laughs> Aha, okay. Yeah. And that's coming from that machine, yeah. It's coming from, from my favorite synthesizer. Uh, <laughs> which I don't have. <laughs> it just became my favorite synthesizer. So we started this, um, this thing where we had, um, we had a PD patch. Uh, Again, that drummer. Listen no, to the drummer. This is, this, is, uh, this is interference. This is another drummer trying to uh, join in. He's, yeah, he, he's it's not, not. It's not his gig. He's done. Yeah, he yeah. He, he left. He's, uh, um, so, mom so instruments. You can, you can search that. You can upload I, I, that. I, I don't search. I search we my can thought. Talk about something else. That this this goes automatically. I, I I was just looking for my thought. But it's if you fine. want to talk about something else, I'm totally open for it. It's very. No, so. <laughs> the weather was fine, but imagine <laughs> it would have been 20 degrees more or so next year. We would have a problem with the catering outdoors. No. No, I, I think I talk about the software label. <laughs> okay. um, so it's, it's called uh, Mom Instruments, and we started with um, a, a, the effect device. It's called RedShop. And it was initially a, a PD patch, which ran in uh, a, a, an app, which is called RJDJ. So you could like, design your own kind of sound environments and have the microphone of the, of the, of the phone recording the environment, and then you kind of change it and alter it with like certain effect chains. And that app went out of business. But we had designed something for that app that we really liked. So we had to recreate it. And so it was initially a PD patch with Florian Grote, a friend of ours, programmed. And then through crowdfunding, we made it into an iOS app so that everyone can use it. It's called RedShop. And then we were working on another idea to draw music. Um, that's an app called Fluxpad. Yeah, please. I wonder if this could be a future of synthesizer and musical instruments if you have such a little interface where mm -hmm. nobody knows if you perform music and you play music, if you just check your emails or if you just watch a telly or uh, look for the news or the weather or if you yeah. have something to do with the music. That was already, <laughs> for me, the catastrophe when people was opening up their laptop, looking into it, doing something, and you look to their flat where the knee is coming through. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> What? Well, this I, is not, uh, yeah, sure, they, if you look from the other side, but usually you just see them head nigging there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you listen to some music. And yeah. I'm very happy that so many people got back to say, okay, I make the rock and roll thing, bring some boxes, play some instruments, and have real stuff where you can see something, even if uh, I was the same. Uh, but... Um, it's a thing you have to do and have to learn. I don't see much of a difference, but I, I, uh -huh. I get your idea. I, I was actually thinking about um, adding some cables to my laptop. So, <laughs> like a wig, you know? Yeah, you just attach idea. a few cables yeah. to, to the, so they, and, and you make the surface black, so it looks like a modular you can synth. put flowers <laughs> next to it. It's also nice, yeah? yeah okay. you, you put your laptop different... on it and then some flowers and then... Yeah. But if you did it with things on the on the floor, that's already so. You, you've in, been experienced. And you perhaps you're over the goal, and I'm. I did not, and I will never reach that um, 
experience to say, okay, I'm done with the hardware or whatever. But yeah, I think you're more a purist than I am because I would use this and then there could be an orchestra or there could be a beer bottle or there could be a shoelace. Uh, but one, know, one, in, know, one very combine intim all these things. intim question. Did you play an, uh, an traditional instrument before you started that? Piano or violin or philharmonica or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it important? I, I was, no, it's not I was drumming. <laughs> it's not really. Yeah, it's. I have the uh, illusion that people who are coming from the background of having learned a lot to be proud on being able to play the pentatonic in five seconds of the whole. They are proud on that, and so they would like to celebrate. And if you give them a classical synthesizer, they may. <laughs> and if they. Uh, you know, if you give it to somebody who did never act that, they don't see the keys. They just say, uh-huh, what's going on here? And they do something else and they search the sound and they experience the synthesizer in opposite to those who are making their, uh, uh, and they say, oh, it doesn't, it looks, it sounds shitty, but I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big difference, uh, because you don't have time to celebrate the sound. And this is a bit the theme where I thought, yeah, it's, a, it's something that I would call a schicksal, that you are a keyboard player, what uh, Flake the day before yesterday called the Tassenficker, where he wrote a book about. <laughs> That's uh, something like a schicksal that I share with Flake. You, you I were, am a Tassenficker, yeah. yes. I used to be a Tassenficker, and I learned to get rid of my Tassenficker schicksal. When I moved to Berlin, met people like Jürgen Michael from Jomox, having this quite limited 16-step sequencer in his drum machine, and people like Technosaurus, he made this old-school uh, monophonic synthesizer that can make very limited things, but they were so proud on it that I thought, there must be something with it that is fascinating. I found it because I came from having an, uh, what, what, what was that, uh, Atari, Atari 1020, and that was having uh, all possibilities of composition and 12-tone scale and harmonies and uh, simulating orchestras and big bands, but then it went back to have and uh -huh. that was it. And uh -huh. I thought, how stupid is that? But then I found out, no, that's not stupid, that's it. That's the soul of it. <laughs> that's the basic. And it's just about this. And I didn't get that in the Tassenficker side. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I ask you if you have the same or incomparable background, or if you <laughs> went directly into, because if you never have been a Tassenficker, you went directly into the goal and said, no, no, it's, it's about sound. Uh, yes, I, I don't think I had a, a similar schicksal. Yeah. <laughs> Best answer you could do now. Thank you. I know you was playing guitar, no? Very badly. <laughs> that was your luck, no? Yeah, um, thank God I played it badly, otherwise I would become yes, a guitarist. otherwise you would have become now into a <laughs> yeah. big band playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I was very bad, but yeah. I enjoyed it, because I could make yeah. noise with it too. And it was yeah. And I found ways of making noise with it because I couldn't play more than three chords. And so, Super. you know, I hit That's the strings enough. and blah, That's blah. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's too many, actually. Yeah, probably. It <laughs> became too many. Yeah. In those days, uh, yeah. there was not so much then with more than three chords. Yeah. And with then, more than two chords. I always thought pressing one note is more punk yeah. rock than playing yeah. three chords. Yeah. You know. Yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah. Exactly. You did it very well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> It was inspiring a lot of people. I remember yeah. you, you saying you, you, you don't even buy records when you want to hear music. You just uh, start your uh, sequencer. Yeah. You said that in an interview. I Did think. I? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very good for business, is it? <laughs> no, it, it made perfectly uh, sense to me yeah. at that time. <laughs> what about you, Moritz? I did learn piano as a child, but not very good. I, I yeah, you come like from Dusseldorf. That's no, no, I grew up in Celle in northern Aha, Germany. Okay. Ah, okay. But thought, you know, the, the things they teach you when you're a child, and you, 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 they want to teach you Bela Bartok. That's that's not the music that you uh, that you like. Yeah. If, if my uh, piano teacher would have uh, taught me Beatles or something, I would probably have got into it more. Mm -hmm. So. The synthesizer saved saved me from that too, and also, of course, um, 
studio technique in its entirety, like rec recording, sequ sequences, all, all things that could play and you, you didn't have to, but you still had to uh, know what you want. Yeah. So that's, that's the work, I, I think. But was, uh, how did, uh, you know, uh, I, their plan was associated with that, what we know as Neue Deutsche Welle, NDW, and Neue Deutsche Welle was something like uh, punk in a, in a new experimental way. I don't know if I mentioned it right, but uh, it, it, was, was, it was everything was allowed. Music. It was synthesizer music. It was synthesizer yeah, music, yeah, 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 it was yeah sure. Yeah. It was synthy pop. I mean, uh, that's what we wanted, wanted to do, because um, there, there weren't so many examples of it yet. So there, there were many open possibilities that we just could do because nobody had done, uh, had done them before. And it was German. We ignored completely all Anglo-American uh, yeah, influences. Yeah, was. I mean, it was a bit rebellious. Yeah. I mean, like breaking this dominance of the uh, of the uh, Anglo-American music, and and of course uh, it was about um, the lyrics. I mean, when I saw the first German punk bands playing live, how they c could connect with the audience by their German lyrics, because people understood what they yes. were singing about. You know, mm. that was totally different to the uh, English concerts, where people basically just listened to the music and, and didn't really understand what these bands were singing about. So there was a total shift in, in, in cultural uh, reception. And in so identity, that you were proud yes, of, understanding yes, yes, and yes. Uh, knowing what they... You, you was able to um, share... Um, the, the ideas of the singer. Yeah, our, our, our own everyday experiences. If we want to bring that to the audience, we have to speak to them in their language yes. that they understand. Sure. It was, seems to be natural. It is natural in England, For in England America. For England and America, it was totally yeah. normal. And they don't have the experience that they was listening to pop music that they don't understand. Actually, I, 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 I got it completely when I traveled to America for the first time in 1979 and I could see how street culture works when you when when the culture uh, has the same language um, that the people uh, that listen to it uh, speak so that, that that's a totally different way to develop culture so and I, and most people that I know uh, I knew that visited America they came back to Germany and now they they, they became Americans, basically. But I learned from it to become German. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Basically. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you was well, that, well, yeah. But sorry, just about that. Uh, the idea of you know creating your own culture. I mean, I remember in the in the early seventies when I was really into kraut rock, well, yeah. which I a term I hate by the way, but it's, it, it's, and I knew some German my contemporaries of mine. 20, you know, 20, 21 year old, and I was going, oh man, you should listen to Klaus Schulze, or you should listen to Neue, or whatever it was. Yeah. And they said, oh no, that's German shit. You know, we want to listen to Jimi Hendrix and Bob Dylan. Uh -huh. and, yeah. uh, okay. and really, so I said, no, it can't be good because it's German. And that was a really sad, it's very, you know, yeah. of course now, I think, I mean, many years later, people appreciate what it was, but same kind of thing as you're, you're talking about. Wolfgang Seidel just wrote a book about it in German, about the crowd rock era yeah. and explaining a bit his opinion. He was the mm. drummer of uh, Tonsteine Scherben. Yeah. I think he was the first drummer, I don't know exactly, but mm. uh, he wrote a book about his opinion explaining the crowd rock, at mm. least in German, that was just released. And normally he was, mm. he should have been here the day before yesterday yeah. explaining a bit and telling a bit about it. Okay. Because I think he he's a very relaxed guy and he was playing mm -hmm. on Superbooth last year together with uh, Nev and somebody else, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, Kla Krautrock was also mm -hmm. something like that, but that was yeah. more hippie stuff, and yeah. uh, I think the Neue Deutsche Welle was more like, punk. Um, yeah, yeah punk more German. punk, but yeah. also... Actually, uh, to, to me, Krautrock, including Kraftwerk, was almost unknown at that time. In 1979, when I uh, made my first steps into music and published our first album, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. Crowd rock or mm, something yeah, no, else. Yeah. I didn't know it. I'm, I only listened to uh, English and American music, mm. and I thought um, the things that I do, the, this is all completely new. You know? What was <laughs> your most influencing song then? Do, do you have one or so? What? Where you said, this was the key song where I thought, this is the way I have to go? Well, at that time, Daniels, um, Warm Leather Red was a 
Game Changer, of course. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah. so Devo. You. you made the German yeah. sound. De <laughs> Devo, <laughs> um, the Human League, uh, Being Boiled was a song. Yeah. And um, these strange um, new sounds. So song. English, all English, no? Human League, all British. Yeah, yeah. Devo yeah. Not American, yeah. mostly Devo British. Is American. Devo is American, yeah. 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 Ah, so, okay, go yeah. ahead. I just, well, I just thought I could come to uh, um, UK mm. and Europe theme, but anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't go no, there. We leave that yeah, out. Yeah, okay. leave that out. Yeah. There, were a few, <laughs> there, were, there were a few tracks that were, were just so different from anything you had ever heard before, and then I, I thought, I want, I want to be there. Mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> You blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. The leatherette, yeah. mm -hmm. that was great. You did do that with the Arp, no? No, MS, uh, sorry, no, uh, Cork 700S. Cork. Yeah. Cork. Your brand, Cork. Yeah. Cork is, is still a great brand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now they're, but they're shrinking mm. it down. Everybody's shrinking everything down. Yeah. Are we getting smaller or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I can think, play I think these just, little keys. I think we just live in smaller. Places. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like the Japanese. Yeah, have we ever right. heard of the Japanese mm. living in these? Right? Yeah, and and I mean, it, you know, if you live in London, which you don't, but yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, you have to live in smaller and smaller places because yeah, okay. it's so expensive. And then you need so smaller you synthesizers. Smaller. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but, sure, there's a, but, but there's a limit uh, defined by the size of your fingers. If it gets smaller than that, you can. You can yeah, but if you end. do music like that, <laughs> you don't have to mind about <laughs> the keys, you know. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, I heard that the thumb is getting bigger with the next generation because they all play like that. <laughs> it, it's true. And there's a region in the brain that's developing. The, the thumb region in the brain is bigger with people who, who are used to um, mm. use, it, use it like that. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I just saw, because I, I took my watch, I ignored it a bit. So, um, mm. well, yeah. I don't know, so it's nice, isn't it? It's nice, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, uh, yeah. we could go ahead. Mm. Uh, so I could go ahead, it's familiar, um, and it's uh, very comfortable here. And slowly I arrived. Uh, <laughs> but I still have to say a few things. What was that? Uh, so yeah, hey, later on. Uh, Daniel, so uh, this is not the end of the uh, Superbooth 17, what was great. So for me, it was very nice to have you all here and to see that every, everything works the way we planned it. That was really a surprise. You never know. Yeah. But, but that, was, that was not everything we planned. So we, plan, we thought that uh, Superbooth, yeah, that's uh, Mars on Mars. It's a performance, you know? <laughs> Um, uh, we planned that everything is uh, successfully and you are happy and so you will join a few more concerts. In between, everybody outdoors has teared down their booths and saved away their stuff and we can enjoy a few more beers with this or that concert. And there's a few more ferries going from here into Mitte for those who like to drive ferries. There's one at nine with up to 300 people of us. There's uh, one at 9.30 with hashtag instant boner on it if you want to have <laughs> while driving the boat into uh, Berlin Mitte. Uh, but I think there's just 50 places on board that was something on reservation. I don't know if there's still seats available. Worst case, you come back if that's totally filled up. And then there's another shuttle going at midnight into Mitte, and there's another unk, 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 in hashtag instant bonus shuttle going at <laughs> half past midnight. At Mitte, that's the one I will take. Yeah. And uh, then I will arrive there next to the sea base. And in the sea base, there's a uh, installation that I've made for Daniel Miller's re-release of Mute Records. I think that's five years ago. Yeah, a bit seven more. Years? Six, seven years. Seven, seven years, years, ago. years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he uh, was able to buy Mute Records back from a bigger record company, EMI, making yeah. it independent again. Yeah. That was a great deal. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 
And for that event, uh, Daniel said, hey, Schneider, can you put there some modulars in the foyer? Because I think that's, that's, it's time to let the people play on it. And uh, that's why I made a carousel, I called it, where six modulars are rotating very slowly. That's something like an installation. And tonight, I could force Dieter Döpfer to make a patch on it. So he will drive there with a boat, and he's making a patch. And that's a patch that will go from there overnight uh, this installation is standing in the sea base, what's a uh, starship below Berlin. It's uh, the reconstruction area of that. They found out that there's a starship that fell down in the future out of Berlin. And that's just the antenna looking out, what's looking like this uh, Funkturm there. And um, that's the middle of it. But you can ask them to explain it to you. They have all details available. <laughs> and um, that's where we could go as long as the real late night after show party in the Ohm Club was a part of the Tresor. That's right around the corner. You can go like that and you will <laughs> arrive. And there in the Ohm Club, you are allowed to enter with these. <laughs> and um, they will let you in with that because that's a part of this show. And uh, half past four? Uh, quarter to four. Quarter to four, Daniel will spin some records on his laptop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do some emails. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do some emails, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's where I would be happy to see you again for another beer or whatever. Um, before we go there, we will see Mouse on Mars next door in the K1 at uh, half past 10. And um, because Moritz was the last one entering the show, we cannot <laughs> see him live performing Der Plan here, but I have the silent hope to have him on board for next year, perhaps with Der Plan performing on the stage. Who knows? Yeah, that's possible. That's possible, yeah. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. I will not forget to let you know, listen to a record from him that he just released to... Uh, be happy and uh, promote it a bit that uh, we will all be here again seeing them live. And li ah, you have it with you. Okay, great. Look to that on the camera that everybody will find it. And um, ask your competent record dealer. <laughs> And last but not least, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who was with us. Sorry if I don't name you out completely now, but uh, thank you for all those. <laughs>